What's going on everybody? So, the other day, I was trying to do something and I couldn't get it done. And I was going about it all wrong and somebody said to me, Hey, you can't fit a round peg in a square hole. Now I know that's a metaphor for when things are seemingly impossible. But to me it's a challenge. I wanted to see if I could fit a round peg in a square hole. So, it danced around up in my noodle for a little bit here. And I came up with an idea. So if you could take this round peg and make it a square peg like such, then the metaphor means nothing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use my South Bend lathe, a round peg, and a square peg is going to come out of it. And in the end, I will be able to fit a round peg in a square hole using the round peg maker. So let's get to it. This should be interesting. All right, guys. So here we go. Told you. There's a lathe right there. Three jaw. Now, optimally, a four jaw chuck works much better for doing what we're about to do. But all we're really going to do is we're going to chuck this up in the lathe here. Try to make sure that the center point is behind the jaw. And we're going to hold it in here, tighten it up. Like I said, four jaw is probably the best way to go on this, but we can make it work with the three jaw. All right, sorry about that. So like I was saying, what we're basically gonna do is we got this chucked up in the lathe, and we're going to touch our tool to the very crown of the outside of this part. Being that this is an inch and a half in diameter, we're going to need to take basically a quarter inch off of each of the four sides in order to make this an inch by inch by inch cube. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the tool in. We're going to basically find as close as possible as we can, because this thing is running oblong, the highest crown, which is right there. And then what we need to do is we need to set up a dial indicator. Now you guys aren't going to be able to see this because the dial indicator is on the floor. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up a dial indicator on the carriage because this particular lathe doesn't have one. So we're going to need to watch this dial indicator. Which I don't know if I zoom out if it will actually show it. All right, let me try to zoom out a little bit, see if you could see that. Oh yeah, there we go. So the dial indicator is sitting right here. We got it set to zero, and what we're gonna wanna do is, we'd, like we said, we need to take a quarter of an inch off of each side of this. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna do a total of 250 thousandths. We'll probably do it roughly 50 thou at a time. So we'll make five cuts on this particular side, and then we'll, uh, we'll make some cuts on the other sides too. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get the camera in a little bit closer because right now the tool holder is blocking your view of actually cutting the part. So let me see if I can get this camera in here a little bit better so that you guys will actually be able to see me cutting this part. Alright, so I think we found a good angle. Good angle for you guys, not so good for me because there's all kinds of crap in the way now. So we're going to kick on the lathe and we're going to start cutting. So like I said, we'll do 50 thou at a time until we hit 250. And this is going to be an interrupted cut, so I'm going to do this one by hand. I'm not going to use any auto feeds or anything. So let's see what 50 thou looks like. Yeah, I think that's going to be about where we're uh, where we're comfortable with 50 thou. There we go. Come back. We'll take another 50. Now we're at 100.
you can really get a feel for that interrupted cut. Usually I lock down the carriage because the interrupted cuts will tend to move the carriage around a little bit. But we're not making anything that needs to be precision. We're not making anything that needs to be, you know, any kind of massive tolerance or anything like that. We're just doing something for fun here. Yeah, see, the carriage just jumped out of place on that one. All right, so there's a hundred thou. We'll go another 50. And I think this time we'll lock the carriage down so it doesn't move. And our last 50. That'll bring us to 200. Now we're going to do our last 50 to bring us to 250, which is a quarter of an inch. Like I said, this was an inch and a half in diameter, so we take a quarter inch off of each side and we get a one inch. So let's go to 250. definitely very rough on machinery. This is aluminum so it's really not too huge of a deal, but if you were doing something like this in steel, the slave is a little bit too small to handle that kind of stuff. I mean, you can kind of hear the bearings in the, uh, really hear the bearings in the head. guys so there it is our first side is cut so now we'll take it out of the machine and once we get it out of there I'll show you guys what the beginnings of it look like all right so here's what we got so far is that little guy 
we got one flat side on it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pop it back in the lathe and we're going to do exactly the same thing on three more sides. So here we go. I'll probably time lapse the rest of it. I'm betting my camera's going to die in between, but we shall see. So now we're going to set this up on a flat side right here. Pull it tight. Give it a little tight in there. And then we're basically going to do the same thing, guys. We're going to run this thing through again. Now you can see that that flat side is up here now. So we're going to run this thing through again. Hopefully that's in focus for you guys. And we'll run the other three sides. So here we go. Same thing again. We're going to find that piece right there. We're going to set our dial indicator to zero so we know how far we're going. Turn this on. Come over here. Come in 50. Lock down the carriage. And away we go. Cue the time lapse. Alright guys, so there you go. As you can see, we got a flat side there, and we got a flat side right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine the other two sides. You guys don't need to see it because it's probably getting boring at this point. But I'm going to machine those other two sides. I'll bring you guys back when it's all ready to go. Alright guys, so I got so caught up in doing everything, I totally forgot to do an outro and actually show you guys the part. I got up here and started editing. I'm like, where's the ending? There was no ending. So, here we go. There is the cube that will now fit in the square hole. So, 
In closing, when somebody says to you, you can't fit a round peg in a square hole, look at them and say, give me an hour and I will make a round peg fit in a square hole. So, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Something a little cool that I thought about earlier. Um, wanted to see if it was possible. I've heard of other people doing it, so I wanted to see if you could actually make, you know, a perfect cube, a one by one by one cube on a lathe. And uh, apparently you can. So, thanks for watching. I know this was, uh, was an interesting one, it was at least for me. I don't know how you guys are gonna like it, but Thanks for hitting that subscribe button, and if you didn't, thank you when you do. Hit that like button for me, share this video for me, make it go crazy, make it go viral, so that everybody can fit a round peg in a square hole, and I will see you all on the next one. Have a good night, everybody.